In 2007, I left as a 23-year-old woman to India. I didn't know why I wanted to go there. It was mainly my intuition that told me to go. I had never traveled alone before, and I had no idea what was in store for me. The last time I told you about my first day in India, the culture shock I experienced and the first lessons I've learned. After several days in Delhi, I traveled together with Mama Love to Rishikesh, a beautiful city at the foot of the Himalayas. It is also called the gateway to the Himalayas with the holy river, the Ganges, as its center. Rishikesh has become known for the Beatles' visit to the Maharishi Manesh Yogi Ashram. The town is full of yoga centers, ashrams, meditation places, and on every street corner you will find an Ayurvedic doctor, a Reiki master, an astrologer or palm reader. A lot of yoga is being done. Now I must honestly say that I was not interested to do yoga. I was far too impressed with everything that happened around me. Clearly, I hadn't landed yet. Mama Love arranged for me a room in an ashram, where she also stayed. The ashram was enclosed in fencing. It felt a bit like a prison, but the fences were there for a reason. It prevented the monkeys from entering our rooms. When I got to my bathroom in the morning, I was greeted by a monkey who was lurking through the bathroom window fence. My second experience with animals, or actually insects, were cockroaches. In all my travels, I had several meetings with them. My first meeting I found quite nauseating. When I entered my room and I saw a cockroach, my first reaction was to stamp it flat with my foot. No sooner said than done. I had squeezed the gunk out of his body by the pressure of my foot and so I left him behind, dead, with his guts half out of his body. I thought it was too dirty to clean up. I would do it later. When I returned to my room a few hours later, the cockroach was gone. What? <laughs> I was really sure I left him for dead. To solve this mystery, I went to Mama Love to see if she had an answer for me. After all, she, she had a, already a lot of experience with traveling, so it seemed to me that I could find the answer with her. When I told the story, she laughed hard. Oh, Dina, she said, didn't you know that if there is one cockroach in the room, you are sure there are more? And that when one of their brothers or sisters dies, he will be eaten with skin and hair. No way, that's gross, I said. On that day, I decided never to kill a cockroach again. In the first place, because the thought that his friends are sitting around him, eating him, is so dirty that I don't want to think about that. I'm quite visual, you know, and I didn't want to have that image in my head ever again. Now I never kill insects. In fact, I try to save them. For example, if there is a spider in the bathroom, then I know there will be no food for him to survive. That's why I prefer to take him outside so I know his chance of survival is higher. And sometimes I think, is it the fate that brought the spider into my bathroom and should I not interfere with it? Or is it fate that I encounter the spider and I just have to act? The duality I struggle with. Sometimes I make a choice on what suits me best. Anyways, we are still in Rishikesh, and now we are going to visit the ashram where the Beatles stayed. It is also known as the Beatles Ashram. This is where they wrote White Album. In the meantime, the ashram was closed, and the whole place was overgrown by the jungle. With the bribe of the guard you could enter, and that's what I did. I had never seen such a place before. The small egg-shaped houses in combination with nature that has swallowed almost everything from stone. Very special. You could just stand in the egg-shaped houses and the top part of the egg was created to meditate in. 
In retrospect, I think it is very special that I've been in this place. As an artist, I am aware of what the Beatles have meant for pop culture. After staying at the ashram with Mama Love for several days, it was time for me to follow my own path. Mama Love became a bit too intense for me, and I didn't feel comfortable in the ashram. I moved to the other side of the river, to a nice place where I met new people again. Slowly my self-confidence returned. I still found everything very exciting and new, but I had enough courage in myself to still do what I wanted.